Welcome back to Sports Science Supplement. Today we are looking at free body diagrams. Here are three examples from the levers uh, video that I've recently posted. Object is we're going to identify the forces, describe how they um, impact motion um, using Newton's free laws, and able to draw an accurate free body diagram. Okay, I will be running through this PowerPoint fairly. Quickly, so if you ever need to read any of the um, content, please pause the video and read it yourself. Okay, so of course, we need to identify three things, particularly of our free body diagrams. The point of application of the force, okay, i.e. where the contact point is occurring. The size of the force, magnitude, direction of that force. So force is mass times acceleration. It is a vector quantity because you're given a magnitude and a direction. However, scalar, if for example, let's go with gravity, okay, is just a magnitude, just tells you the size of that force. We use arrows to represent force. The longer the arrow, the greater the force. Net forces, okay, if they are balanced, that means that um, there is no motion taking place. However, if they're unbalanced, that means there is motion taking place in one direction or another. Okay, and again, that uh, is resulting upon the application of force where it's being applied to. So external forces on the ground, vertical forces. So when we're drawing our labels, okay, these are what arrows are going up and down. So we have weight and reaction forces. Um, we have horizontal forces, friction and air resistance. Okay, so these are very similar in the water. However, minor few changes. So buoyancy is the reaction force. Okay, and for thrust and drag. Please note drag is also um, outside of water as well, but we do call it air resistance, okay, because the atmosphere itself is a fluid environment. Weight is mass times gravity. Please um, make sure you don't mix mass and weight. Mass is what you're made of. Weight is the, is the mass that you're made of times gravity on Earth, okay. We use 9.81 meters per second as our. Um, gravity equation, uh, sorry, numerical, numerical value. Reaction force comes about because of Newton's third law, but every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Friction force, okay, acts differently from different um, athletes. We use um, different uh, surfaces um, in order to increase or decrease friction, depending on the sport. For example, table tennis, they use the rubbers on the back to increase friction. Okay, that is the aim of it. Likewise, with uh, studs on football boots and rugby boots, they have a greater surface area when they impact the ground and push, that allows for a greater friction force. Air resistance depends on the shape, surface, characteristics, and position of the body, cross sectional area of the body, and velocity of the body. So, for example, if you're running um, and doing a sprint, okay, you won't feel as much air resistance as you do. Um, unless you're traveling on, for example, stealth at Fort Park and you're in the front seat and you go naught to 80, you will feel that air press against you a lot more than if you're just running alongside. Okay, so velocity is a massive um, um, add-on to air resistance. Okay, it's a massive, sorry, factor is the word I'm looking for. Okay, cross-sectional area, okay, air resistance. So. Um, let's go for example, unfortunately a more obese individual against Usain Bolt 100 meters. The most more obese guy will have a greater air resistance impacting him than Usain Bolt just because of his um, physicality. Okay, drag is experienced by an athlete or an object, for example an F1 car. Okay, if you need more information please look up more videos regarding that on YouTube, there are many more. Free body diagrams, okay, we need to be aware of using these terms um, below here. So weight is given by W, reaction R, friction F, air resistance AR. So when we're looking at a football, let's go a goal kick. Um, Addison for Liverpool takes goal kick. And the force is a direct force through the center of mass. This is known as a direct force. Um, I'll just introduce quickly, um, but I will cover it in a later video. 
However, if we were to kick it outside the center of mass, that would be known as a indirect fault force because the force application itself has not gone through the center of mass. Air resistance drag is three newtons. Okay. However, if we were to use a shuttlecock, okay, that three newtons there might change to ten newtons of drag because the feathers obviously are creating a larger surface area like we've just mentioned. And weight due to gravity, 50 newtons for shuttlecock might be one newton because of its lightweight uh, properties. Okay, so this is a very simplistic um, free body diagram of the football being kicked. Please note here we have a absolute angle, okay, which is relevant to the horizon here from the center of mass, and theta is the angle there. Okay, so in action, vertical forces, if weight equals the res resist, um, reaction force, okay, i.e., these um, lengths here are identical, net force is zero. So no vertical acceleration up or down. Vertical forces, uh, so the actual friction force is greater than air resistance, hence this here arrow is a lot shorter than this which will mean that the friction force means the direction of motion going right is, is unbalanced, okay? That, this lovely skeleton here, dancing along, is moving in that direction. There is forward acceleration, okay? Um, please pause this and have a look, okay? Please um, look back at the Arnold Schwarzenegger photo that I posted at the very end of the last video. Um, he has two feet on the ground and hence two points of contact and reaction and friction obviously come from both legs, not just one. So therefore we have R1, R2, F1, F2. Please note, okay, when these equal to weight and air resistance, there is no acceleration and no net force. But if either of these were to be greater than weight or air resistance or less, there would be some motion or acceleration happening. Um, please pause the video and have a go at um, doing a free body diagram using the parameters I've given you and the labels for these four images below. Okay, here is an example of a free body diagram that I've uh, drawn for you. Well, got for you. I'm um, not that good of an artist, unfortunately. Key terms we need to include within our answers. Okay, so whenever I do a free body diagram and I tell my students to draw one, okay, I always would like an explanation. Okay, even if the marks are all contained within the drawing, I do like an explanation below as to what is happening. Therefore, the student um, or yourselves have an idea what's going on and the examiner can understand exactly what you are trying to um, explain. So, balanced forces, unbalanced forces. We can tell already it's a start of a sprint, so it's going to be an unbalanced force unless they're frozen in time. Forward motion, okay, resultant force, friction force, accelerate. First of all, we have to start with the line of gravity from the center of mass. This is a rough estimate of where the center of mass will be. Okay, so the line of gravity is where the majority or um, of the weight will fall to the ground. Okay, however. We've only got one point of contact, so therefore, ground reaction force comes from that one point of contact. Please note that this force is greater than the line of gravity, as when, as we know from general common sense, that when you start a hundred meter sprint, okay, the athlete does not stay at that very low level. They want to get upright as fast as they can in order to accelerate and get up to their top speed. So this athlete will be getting up moving upwards in that forward motion there. The force, friction force, okay, is very, very large um, off the blocks, hence the forward motion, and this would be also known as the direction of motion, not the name of the athlete. And air resistance is minor, okay, because we need it to be a lot smaller than friction force in order to show there's great acceleration happening here. So that is how you would draw a free body diagram in an exam. I would use a stick figure. Okay, taking 
drawing all the muscles, etc., and all the anatomical parts of the athlete will take too much time. You need to take note of that in the exam. What might exact uh, mark scheme look like for that scenario? Okay, look at how this athlete here has drawn their free body diagram. It is very simplistic. It is a stick figure. Okay, please note that the foot is there. Okay. One mark per max four, one mark for free body diagram. So you get one mark for that. Okay, three marks for free of the following friction force F is greater. So this line here is greater than air resistance. Perfect, that's one mark. Friction force is large due to the large force being exerted on the ground. So if this is in contact, the foot is in contact with the ground, that is also another mark. Okay. In the explanation below, you could say the increase you could increase this friction by using running spikes. Air resistance is relatively small in, um, due to the cross-sectional area, relatively low velocity. So, because it, they're just starting out the race, air resistance will be relatively low. And you could say like um, bolts or your hand blade, they wear the tight-fitting um, clothing in order to reduce the air resistance or drag. The resultant force acts in the same direction as friction, okay, causing acceleration. Linked to Newton's first law, the greater the friction force, the greater the acceleration. And in the second law, plenty of marks here, guys, plenty of marks to choose from. But that there, superb, okay. And with a couple of lines talking about maybe spikes and the clothing worn to reduce air resistance and increase friction force. Um, superb okay that is where your marks are if you need time to pause the video and make some notes on um, this type of exam question please do top tips use stick people draw and label arrows okay so many students don't label their arrows they just draw them and forget to label them in the exam and that is costly very very costly draw and label as different lengths okay make sure that they are accurate Okay, particularly for balance and unbalanced forces, they have to be very accurate, and the examiner will pick on that. Forces arrows must be drawn where the uh, contact place uh, contact is taking place, um, like the runner there with the foot on the ground. Okay, one point of contact. When drawing weight, ground reaction force, and resistance, these must be drawn from the center of mass. Okay, because that is where all forces act upon. Friction must be drawn where the body is in contact with another surface and in the same direction to motion. Now for my A-level students. Have a go at answering these two questions and then pause the video before continuing to see the answers. Okay, so Newton's first law, okay. Or apologies, Newton's laws of motion explain how a basketball player achieves maximum jump height in the layup shot. Okay, and the second question is describe how friction is maximized to allow a rugby player to change direction at speed and calculate the force required to accelerate an 88 kilogram rugby, rugby player winger at a rate of four meters per second. Second, okay, so maximum height for a layup jump. So that all includes second and third laws. Second body the player applies force to the to is the ground. So that for the in order to have the reaction force that will be the ground itself. Hence why the ground applies an equal and opposite reaction propelling the player off the ground. The player eccentrically contracts the quadriceps and swings the arms of the ball to additionally apply momentum to the ground in order to create or allow a greater jump height. The player continues to reach the option of height. And lastly F equals MA, 88 kilograms times 4 meters per second per second, 350 newtons. Okay, I am running out of time here, but I do hope you found this very useful. If you have any questions, leave a comment, um, like and subscribe, and more videos will be coming out to help you with your exam success.